Hi, this is Nathan from Teach the Table, and today I'm teaching you how to play Mysterium. Set in the 1920s, most players will represent psychics who've gathered to perform a seance, and one player will be the ghost, who's trying to give clues to the psychics about a recent murder. The gameplay is kind of like a combination of Dixit and Clue, as the ghost can't speak or be of any help except to show cards to each player to help them figure out their individual suspect, location, and murder weapon in that order. The game's played cooperatively and you have only seven turns represented by hours on the clock here in which to complete each individual's task, after which the psychics will get one final vision from the ghost up here and take a vote on which player's suspect is the actual true culprit. If they vote correctly, then everyone wins. Behind the screen, the ghost will have a suspect, location, and a murder weapon assigned to each player. All the psychics will start with their intuition token on the progress board for the suspects, indicating that they need to figure out who their suspect is correctly before they can move on. The ghost will put one or more vision cards in front of a single psychic player to try to clue them in on which suspect is theirs, and then move the token behind the screen to remind themselves of who already got clues. Then they'll draw more vision cards until they have seven again in their hand, and repeat this process until all psychics have received a vision of at least one card. Depending on the difficulty chosen to play the game, the ghost will have a number of crow markers, and these can be used to discard all seven cards in their hand and draw seven new cards if these cards don't match up very well. All you have to do is take one of these and put it on top of the screen here to indicate that they've used it so everyone can see. After the ghost has given vision cards to all the players, a sand timer is started and players can discuss at will. Before the timer runs out, each psychic can do two things. First, they'll place their intuition token on one of these suspects that they think the ghost is trying to clue them in on. Second, if they want to, they can place one or more clairvoyancy tokens pointing to another psychic's intuition token to indicate that they either agree or that they disagree with their choice. Players can't place more than one clairvoyancy token on each intuition token, and they couldn't place one on their own intuition token. But it is possible that one intuition token will have clairvoyancy markers from multiple players. After you use these tokens, they'll be discarded to the clock up here, but they will come back to your hand at the start of the fourth turn, so use them wisely. The purpose of clairvoyancy tokens is to give you points on this clairvoyancy track, which will give you more clues towards the true culprit at the end of the game. Once the sand timer runs out, no more tokens can be played or moved, and the ghost will indicate to each psychic if their intuition token was placed correctly or incorrectly. If a player guessed correctly, the ghost would flip over the card behind their screen to indicate that. Any players that had clairvoyancy tokens that agreed with it will get points on the clairvoyancy track. And then the player who guessed correctly will get to move their intuition token up to the next progress board to do locations next. They take the correct card, put it inside their sleeve, like so, and discard any vision cards that they had. If they were incorrect, then players with clairvoyancy tokens that disagreed with it will get points on the clairvoyancy track, and then the player will just reset their intuition marker back to the progress board they're already on. If you're incorrect, you get to keep all your vision cards so they might help you on the following turns until you can guess this correctly. Once a psychic has correctly guessed all three cards, they're going to move their intuition marker up to the final board up here, and they'll get clairvoyancy points for each turn remaining in the game. They won't have any more cards to guess of their own, but they can still help other players in the future turns, and they can place their clairvoyancy tokens if they still have any. If all psychics have completed their tasks, then you move on to the final phase of the game of identifying the true culprit. Otherwise, at the end of each turn, you just keep moving the clock forward by one hour, and hopefully before the end of the seventh hour, all players will have guessed all their cards and have their intuition token on the final board. Hopefully all psychics have collected their three cards before time ran out, and now they'll group the cards together on the table with a number underneath for voting purposes. One of these groups will contain the true culprit of the murder. The ghost will choose three cards from his hand, one to indicate the suspect, one to indicate the location, and one to indicate the murder weapon as associated with it. They're gonna shuffle those up and place them on the board. The ghost will secretly place a token for the correctly numbered group down on the board down here. And from this point forward, no more communication is allowed. Now a secret vote will take place and it goes in the order of the clairvoyancy track. At some points in the track, a new card will be revealed. And then at some points, if you hit someone's clairvoyancy marker, then they have to place a voting token. The votes are on the back of the clairvoyancy tokens. They all have numbers, so they're going to choose a number according to what they think is the correct group. 
In this example, at zero, a card is revealed. Everyone can see that. Move up to five, second card is revealed. Now at six, blue would have to vote, so they choose one of their clairvoyancy tokens and place it inside of their sleeve to keep it secret. Now at seven, third card is revealed and yellow now has to vote. So they choose one, put it in their sleeve. And then the last one is the pink player, which would vote. Once all votes have been cast, they're tallied up. If there isn't a clear majority, then the player with the highest clairvoyancy will break the tie. Finally, you reveal who the true culprit was, and if the majority was correct, then everyone wins and the ghost can rest in peace. If not correct, then everyone loses. And that's how you play Mysterium. The biggest mystery to me is how they got a playtime of exactly 42 minutes on the box, but that's neither here nor there. Thanks for watching Teach the Table, and don't forget to have fun!